Welcome to the Michelle Tafoya podcast sponsored by Genyacell. Remember when you were a kid and you went back to school and you gave that little report, what I did with my summer. I'm going to give you a report called Why I Traveled Across the Globe to See Harry Styles. That's next. Now, it's the Michelle Tafoya podcast. Okay, so you heard me right. Um, and I just did this recently and I didn't say it in advance because I wanted to go and have the experience of seeing Harry Styles with my daughter in Vienna, Austria of all places, and then come back and tell you about it. So that's what I'm going to do today. But first ladies look in the mirror. I'm sure Harry Styles would agree with me. If you see those dark spots, they're not going away on their own. Right, Harry? <laughs> Introducing the dark spot corrector from Genucel right in time for summer. The dark spot corrector with not one, but three cutting edge ingredients. It goes to work fast to target sunspots, dark spots, liver spots, and even old discoloration, both on your face and hands. You'll be amazed at how quickly you're going to see results. And you can now enjoy your summer sun, beach, barbecue without the embarrassing spots, right? With Genucel, you'll see the results or your money back. No questions asked. So go to Genucel.com right now. It's G E N. UCEL.com. Get your dark spot corrector with the new Genucel most popular package now featuring one of my favorite things, summer essentials like the best selling ultra retinol moisturizer with a powerful retinol alternative for safe use in the summer sun. Visit Genucel.com slash Michelle. And don't forget it's Michelle with one L M I C H E L E right now for these amazing summer essentials and save over 70% off Genucel's most popular package. Don't wait, order Genucel's most popular package now. Free shipping, free returns, and the best luxury skincare you've ever used all at 70% off. Genucel.com slash Michelle, G E N U C E L.com slash Michelle. All orders will include a mystery luxury gift while supplies last genucel.com slash Michelle. Okay. This particular episode of the Michelle Tafoya podcast will include some original video from the Harry Styles concert in Vienna, Austria that I took. This was the show, by the way, where he got hit in the face with something and kind of went, you know, covered his eyes and was in pain for a couple seconds. My daughter and I didn't notice that when it happened. Um, there's, there's so much going on on stage and on the screens behind him that we didn't see that particular moment. But I can tell you something that didn't happen before the show. We didn't have our bags searched. We didn't go through a magnetometer. So that that's I'm going to put that story on hold. Why, Michelle, why would you go to Vienna, Austria, with a 14 year old to see Harry Styles. About six months ago, I noticed my daughter was so into Harry Styles. She was streaming his concerts. He's on this love on tour and he was, she was streaming his concerts from all over the place. We would hear her at night singing along with Harry Styles live. And I finally said, well, you know, what are you doing? So I watched one with her. And then those of you that follow me on Substack, you know that I watched the Grammys with her because Harry was going to be on. And to my surprise and amazement, Harry Styles won Best Album. Now, that's no small thing at the Grammys. You're against people like Taylor Swift and Beyonce. Now, some of you may be going, yeah, Michelle, you're really late to this party. Did you not like One Direction? I did. But, I, you know, as a boy band, it's not ne necessarily my thing. Harry on his own, on the other hand. Yeah, I could get into that. And my daughter would play Harry Styles music in the car with me from all three of his albums, including Fine Line, which might be my favorite. Uh, and I started to say, I think this guy, there's more depth. There's more breadth to this artist than I realized. He's a really good songwriter. He's easy on the eyes. He moves really well. The charisma is ridiculous. And so I said to my husband one night, we have all these flight credits and frequent flyer miles. And our daughter may never be at this point of childhood, if you will, again, where she is this into a superstar. Why don't I take her to see a concert in Europe before he's finished? At this point, he had about two, three weeks left on tour. And my husband, who is big into investing and spending money on experiences as opposed to stuff, said, do it. 
I didn't even sleep that night. I was so excited. Got up, called the airlines, booked a hotel, realized that the Vienna concert was going to be the one. And when I told her the next morning, she was in shock. She is not a super emotional girl, but her face told the story. So the other day, July 7th, we jumped on a flight, went through Paris, landed in Austria, went and scoped out the stadium, bought merch the day ahead, figured out how we were going to tackle all this. And dealing with the jet lag and crabby uh, cab drivers who didn't want to take our credit cards because cash is better for them. We were dealing with all this stuff. And, and she said, I want to get, I want to queue up, you know, at five o'clock tomorrow morning, the day of the show. <laughs> Keep in mind, the show starts at like nine at night. But this was a once in a lifetime. And I devoted myself to making this experience right for her. So we set the alarms. She had a whole outfit that she had put together, which is awesome, which I'll show you without showing her face. And we got ourselves up and we got, we were at the, the stadium by 6.15 a.m. for a 9 p.m. show. But keep in mind, we had standing seats, if you can call them that. So there you can sit in the, now this was the biggest Ernst Hoppel stadium is the biggest arena or biggest outdoor stadium in, in Vienna, in, in Austria. So it's massive, but you can buy seats that where you get to stand close to the stage. And I said to her, well, how, how do you stand close to the stage at a Harry Styles concert and not get stampeded? And she said, mom, everyone respects one another. <laughs> Okay, so we went and we got in line at 6.15 a.m. And I'm glad we did because the number of people that showed up after us was enormous. We stood in the first line. We got moved to a second line. So they move you. Then they number you. Mine is now gone, but I have this green numbering on my wrist. They number you. And then they give you a wristband. And then you sit there in this line for hours and hours and hours. Now, once you have the wristband, you can leave the line, go get food, go get something to drink, go to the bathroom, come back, which I did like three times. We got to know three law students from Austria and a Bulgarian young lady, she was about 20, who were in line with us, and we made friends with them. And that was very enjoyable. But I want this quick aside. For those of you that think that obesity is an American problem, I'm here to tell you that it's also at least an Austrian problem. I would venture a guess it's nearly a worldwide problem with the exception of like China and India and Africa. But it is a European issue as well. And I, um, I have the memories to prove it. So you're in this line and at a certain point, about five, six hours in, all the girls in line, and it was, the ratio was probably 120 to one girls to boys, females to males. At a certain point, it seemed like they all knew it was time to start putting on their makeup and changing their clothes. So Olivia and I, my daughter, we arrived in the clothes we were going to wear. Other people did too, not everyone. And suddenly there was this, all this hubbub along every line. And there are massive number of people in these lines. And they start changing and putting on their makeup and curling their hair and doing all these things. And that was the moment. And then about maybe an hour, two hours later, we all stood up and started moving toward the arena. As I said, we all expected to be searched or at least go through a magnetometer, magnetometer, I think that's what it's called, you know, the, the bag and tag, the, the mag and bag, um, where they, they put you through that and they find out. Now, I carried in, folks, three phone charging batteries, three you know, then they're the size of at least a deck of cards. I had one in a little fanny pack that I was wearing and I had two in my back pockets. Everyone, everyone had a phone. And so as we progressed through this line and we got into the stadium when we, we, you, you then stake out your spot, you got to stake out your little two by two foot square by standing or sitting. And you can't really move at that point. You can save spots for other people. You can, you know, you're on this sort of honor system, but buyer beware. You got to hold on to your spot. But we walked in there with all those batteries and phones 
and no one said a thing. So when you saw that Harry Styles got hit in the eye with what appeared to be maybe a a flower bud or something, piece of food maybe, uh, that wasn't the worst thing he could have gotten hit with if someone had had malicious intent. But none of these hundreds of thousands of young ladies and men had malintent. They kept their phone chargers dry, if you will. So once in, we sat for another two, three hours waiting for the opener. Wet Leg is the name of that band. Some pretty raunchy material, which is why my daughter looked up at me at one point and said, I don't like Wet Leg and this is why. I love my daughter. So anyway, we sat through that. Then, you know, once, and trust me, everyone at this concert, every person in the building knows the timing, except for me. They know Wet Leg finishes, then some music will play, then Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen will play. And once that plays, the next thing you're going to see is Harry Styles. So we're sitting there and they're playing some, you know, uh, Tina Turner and uh, various songs. It, it, great was trying to keep the energy up. At this point, we had been sitting or on our feet all day long. All day long. I, I, I don't know how some of these girls did it. I watch girls who never went to the restroom. The benefits of youth. So anyway, so finally wet leg finishes, good riddance, more power to them. They got the Harry style tour. Then Bohemian Rhapsody plays and the whole place starts singing along with Bohemian Rhapsody. And the only one of the silver linings of that is that a lot of these young girls who maybe had never been exposed to Queen, which is one of my favorite bands, they all know Bohemian Rhapsody. So that finishes and then suddenly things start to get loud and exciting and the band comes out and every p person in the arena has their phone, you know, trained on where Harry Styles is going to emerge. It, it's something to behold. Uh, it, it's something to behold. And then finally, Harry Styles comes out. And as you can see from the pictures, he's wearing purple and green, this really cool outfit that, that shows off his very well-sculpted abs, I will say. And the place goes wild. And I made sure I had my camera trained on my daughter's face. Because all I cared about was seeing what she looked like when this guy walked on stage. And I have a photo that I'm not going to share with you. I'm sorry, it's too personal. But that photo, that single moment was worth every pain in the ass that we encountered on this trip. That moment. And to see her in a state that I never see her in. Because like I said, this child is very even keeled. She's taught me a lot about staying calm, cool, and collected, which I'm generally not. This 14-year-old whom we adopted 14 years ago from Bogota, Colombia. So she's not genetically mine. Otherwise, she might have, you know, been freaking out. But she's she's her own person and she's incredible. And she but <laughs> in this moment, she went nuts. There was a point in the concert where, if you know Harry Styles, he played a song called Fine Line. And it's very slow and dramatic and emotional. And it's really beautiful. And the horns at the end are remarkable. And it, it signifies the first ending of the concert because, of course, he leaves and comes back. But there were young women around me who were sobbing. Not just, not that. I'm talking so sobbing. And I wanted to turn and say, are you going to be okay? But I didn't. But this is the effect that this person, Harry Styles, has. Now, I get it now much more than I did before we got there. But I will say this, what is fascinating to me about this whole thing. The way that one human being, granted, he is on platforms that expose him to every corner of the universe. 
But this one guy can have 100,000 people at one time pay good money, show up, stand in line. For us, it was a 20-hour day. Show up, stand in line, wait in the heat, deal with all that, um, pay the money. And they talk about him like he's the Messiah. <laughs> I'm, I, I, I'm a little exaggerating, but not really. So I guess my final message to Harry Styles would be this. And he doesn't seem to take it for granted. He seems to understand that he's there to entertain. And he says to you, we're going to do our best to entertain you for the next couple of hours. And it's not a long show. It's not Springsteen-esque. It's not Taylor Swift. She's got more albums than he does. He's got three albums to choose from. He plays about two hours. But his interaction with the crowd, his engagement, the way he addresses the crowd, the way he talks to the crowd is, is so uh, authentic. And I get why all of these people love him. But it's it's almost strange when you ha it's almost like a religion <laughs> i'm i'm chuckling only because i realize how dorky that sounds but it, lately i've been watching the chosen and if you're not watching it, it it's really interesting and when the people are gathering to see jesus speak they talk about you know he's the messiah he's the one he's this this adoration this magnetic worship of all of these young people toward this man it was crazy it was crazy uh so what i saw i think more than just a concert was a phenomenon but what i really got to see was my daughter happy ha maybe happier than i've ever seen her um not to suggest that she's not a happy child, but this was a dream come true for her. And she didn't care about sitting on planes and trying to deal with jet lag and none of that. She was single minded there to see her idol. And she got to see him. What I'm proud of is she didn't cry. She's not that kid. She smiled. She sang every syllable of every song. She danced, she jumped, she videotaped, videotaped, recorded. <laughs> it was awesome. Never mind that our flight home the next day was canceled once we arrived at the airport. Never mind the travails we went through to get home and the way that my body responded to being up for 19 straight hours on that concert day, getting very little sleep the whole trip, and then just being in a cramped plane to, in order to get us home. Never mind any of that, because I know that all sounds like, shut up, Michelle. I get it. But when you're in it, it's pretty uncomfortable. At the same time, I'd do it again to see her face. Part of me wishes I could share this photo with you, but it's just too personal. I'm not going to do it. But it's going to be a photo that I don't even need to look at it. I've got the image emblazoned in my mind. One other thing. We think that America is woke. I mentioned the young Bulgarian woman. She's about 20 years old, just graduated college, was moving on in her life. And she was talking about how Bulgaria is very racist and homophobic. And that it was nice to be at a concert and sitting in line at Harry Styles where she felt safe. I kid you not. <laughs> she felt safe. There's also a massive, massive LGBTQ presence at these concerts for Harry Styles. This concert included, he will assist someone in coming out. He finds someone with an, a sign in the audience that says, Harry, help me come out. And he does this whole big deal. And it's a, quite a moment for these people. I often wonder, are they just holding up that sign because they want Harry to pay attention to them and they know he's going to pick one of them, so they do it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't really care. I come out, don't come out. I don't. I honestly don't care. I just wonder if that motivates some of these young people to to bring those signs. But it was something else, and I am a Harry. I am now. I'm not a Swifty, but I'm officially a Harry. And you know what? I'm kind of proud of that, and I'll never forget that trip to Vienna, Austria, 
for the look on my daughter's face or the cramps that I felt after I arrived home from sitting on that plane. Uh, Harry, do good as you continue to do. Be brave. You are that. You took a hit to the face and you weathered it. And I, I, if I didn't show it already, we'll show it now. But there is a piece of video that I shot where something is coming up on the stage to get to him and he swats it away. He, he's very capable of maneuvering through and around the stuff that's, I mean, fans, boas, flags, signs, flowers are being constantly thrown up there. Um, if you want an intro to Harry, you want to know what all the fuss is about, I would say get his latest album, Harry's House. And then get Fine Line and then get his first album. And maybe you'll see, as I've learned, that this guy is more than just a former member of a boy band. He's a he's a he's an artist and an, a very, very good one. I'll leave it at that. Be brave. Do good. Until next time. See ya, Harry. And uh, we'll see you then.